Hey guys, welcome back. Today we'll be looking at the Fourier LM test. As you know, standard unit root tests should not be used on data with structural breaks. The Fourier LM has some nice features that make it pretty useful. It supports breaks in any combination of the level, trend, and regime. It does not require you to specify the number of breaks or their location. And maybe most importantly, it's effective in the case of smooth and sharp breaks whereas some of the other tests are only effective for sharp breaks. Finally, there are fewer parameters to estimate, so it might run faster for you. However, one thing to note is that it does not provide estimated break locations. Today we'll cover everything that you need to know to run the test with your data and confidently interpret the results. To follow along, you'll need to have Gauss and the free add-on TSPDLib installed plus a time series data set to work with. We'll start by running the Fourier LM example that comes with TSPDLib. Our working directory is set to the Gauss home directory. If you're not sure what your Gauss home directory is, enter the command git gauss home into the program input output window and Gauss will let you know. Our project folders window shows us the contents of our current working directory, which is currently set to Gauss Home. We can find the example in Gauss Home, Packages, TSPDLib, and finally Examples. Go ahead and double click to open the example file. Click the Run button to run the file. We can see that the file ran successfully and printed an output report. We'll get to the output in just a minute, but let's first discuss the inputs to the Fourier under LM procedure. It has one required input, which is a time series vector. It can be of any frequency, daily, monthly, quarterly, or anything else, but it cannot have any gaps or missing values. It also has three optional inputs. The first is the maximum number of legs, which is called Pmax in the docs. We'll call it max legs here for clarity. We're setting it to 8, which is going to be the default setting. The next optional input is the maximum Fourier frequency, which is called Kmax. Again, we'll use a name that seems a little more clear to me, and we'll set it to its default value of 5. Internally, the Fourier under LM function is going to try all possible combinations of legs, up to max legs, for each possible Fourier frequency. Their default values are good for most cases. Decreasing either of the values will just make the test less thorough, so unless you really have a good reason, I would recommend just leaving them as they are. The final optional input is the choice of information criteria. As you can see, AIC, Schwartz, and TSTAT are available. Again, we are selecting the default value, which is 3, to use the TSTAT. The information criteria that you selected will be used to choose the best leg for each Fourier frequency. Finally, on the left side of the equals sign, we see the return values, which include the LM statistic, the chosen Fourier frequency, F, the chosen number of legs, P, and the appropriate critical values. And as you can see, they are also shown in the printed output below. For this example case, we didn't find evidence to reject the null hypothesis that the data has a unit root because the test statistic is larger than all of the critical values. Now let's run this analysis with a new data set. First, we'll change our working directory to the location of our data file. Now we'll open a new file to run the test with our data. Let's give it a more descriptive name and then we'll move the example file to the right so that we can see both files at the same time. The first three lines of the file will be the same as the example. New clears all data from the Gauss workspace. CLS clears all output from the command window, and the library statement makes the TSPDLib procedures, such as Fourier under LM, available for our use. Next, we'll double-click our new data file to open it in the data import window. We have some interbank rates in an Excel file from Fred. Gauss expects the variable names to be in the first row. Under the Import Options tab, we can specify that the header row is actually 11, and after we hit Enter, Gauss adjusts the highlighting to the area of the data. 
While we're here, let's also make the name of the data frame we import to be a little more friendly. We won't need the date variable, so we'll unselect it and click the Import button. Gauss has brought us to the data page so that we can preview our data. The data looks like we expect, and the name of our data frame is reasonable, but the variable name is still not very friendly. Let's rename it before we continue. Ah, much better. Now back to the edit page. We'll copy and paste the data loading code that the data import window created for us. We'll use the same settings as before, so let's copy those over. Now we just need to update the name of our data vector in the call to Fourier under LM, and we can run the test. The report tells us that we have evidence to reject the null hypothesis of a unit root at the 10% level, because our test statistic is between the 5 and 10% critical values. Well, now you know how to run the Fourier LM unit root test and interpret the results. If you have any comments or questions, go ahead and leave them below, and we'll see you next time.